Hey guys, I am back with a requested video. So most of you guys know that I have recently come back from Europe and some of you requested that I put together a travel tips video. And after being in Europe for four weeks and also just from my other experiences traveling, I do have quite a few tips that I'd like to share with you. So let's get into it. So the first thing you need to do before you even think about going on holiday is working out how much money you need to save and what your budget is going to to be. So the way that I worked this out was that I looked at how much flights were going to be, accommodation, as well as general traveling costs such as express trains or Ubers and things like that. And then the rest of it um, fell into food and spending money. So the way that you work that out is obviously with flights, you can look at how much flights are going to be, you can sort of estimate it. And I always overestimate things because the worst thing you can do is to underestimate how much you need to save and then you end up going away and you don't have enough money. So always overestimate. So you look at how much your flights are going to be with accommodation. That depends on what kind of accommodation that you want to stay in. So to give you an example, uh, if I'm going to stay in a hotel, I prefer to stay in a hotel that's four or five stars. That's just me. I know it's a bit princessy of me, but that's just my preference. I knew that I would not be able to afford four or five star hotels in Europe. Like that's just crazy. So that's why I decided to look at Airbnb places, which I thought was pretty much on the same level as a four slash five star hotel. Obviously you don't get the service. So then what you can do is look at the cost of the accommodation and in each city or wherever you're going and work out the estimate of your accommodation expenses. Now in terms of food, I basically estimated how much I would need to spend per person. So however many people you have in your party of travel uh, per day and then you would times that by the total number of days that you're going for and then spending money it depends if you plan on going shopping a lot we did so we allocated quite a bit there and the total estimate that i came up with for our europe trip was thirty thousand dollars so that's a lot of money and like i said it's an overestimated budget so you get an idea of how much money you should be saving or how much money you should have before you go or once you work it out and you realize wow like i cannot afford 30 grand then you know where you need to cut down obviously you can't really do much about the cost of flights because that's just how much it is um, unless you decide to go you know during low season for example or even shoulder season so once you work it out you can sort of look at where you can cut costs now when you go on holiday you can choose to join a tour which will basically mean that you follow their itinerary and they take you wherever and you don't really need to think about what you're doing each day because it's all planned out for you but we actually much prefer not doing that and being able to have our own freedom of deciding where to go, how long we want to spend at each place and just going about things at our own pace. So in order to do that, you actually need to do quite a bit of research. And I mean, I guess it depends where you're going. If you're going to somewhere like Europe, I would definitely suggest that you do the research because there's just so many places that you could go that it would be really worth your while to do your research. And what I did to come up with my itinerary and I did put hours and hours of effort into this was that I would look at each city and I would break it down into places of interest. So that would be like your tourist attractions, churches, things like that. Uh, break it down into restaurants because that's important too. You want to go to restaurants that, you know, that city is well known for. You know that it's a good restaurant as well as places to go shopping if that's what you want to do. Then when I was satisfied that I had done enough research on that city, then I would basically put it into an itinerary of each day. So I know each day what I'm doing and I will sort of look at the places of interest and restaurants, see what's close by and try and sort of bunch them together so that it's all sort of in the same area each day or at least you know it logistically makes sense. Now what I definitely recommend if you're doing this is not to pack your itinerary too much. For us what I did was that I would sort of have a daytime plan and then time to go home and rest and then continue on at night if we had plans at night but I never really had a full-on schedule from you know 10 a.m or 9 a.m to 
10 p.m. because if you're doing that every day and you're going for a long period of time you can really get burnt out and at the end of the day you're on holiday you still want to be well rested and things like that and you might not need that if you're a person that has enough energy to do that then fine go ahead and do that and that's really good if you can but i personally would recommend to not pack it up too much allow for rest but also the other reason for not packing your itinerary too much is because other things will pop up that you hadn't researched for that you might want to do on that day as well so just allowing for a bit of flexibility now although we didn't join a big tour for our whole trip we did do a couple of day tours and we did a few food tours and i highly highly recommend it for places where you might not know too much about that certain place and it would be really beneficial to have a guide sort of educate you so to give you an example we did a tour of the coliseum in rome because we didn't know too much about it and it really enhances the experience when you are learning about the place that you're at so you might want to consider doing a couple of you know half day tours or whatever on certain places and also with places that might be harder to get to such as you know the farms in Tuscany you might want to do or consider doing a day tour as well because you know it's definitely worth doing those sorts of things now the other thing is the food tours so we absolutely love doing the food tours because it's not just about eating and that's you know obviously the best part about a food tour but you also get to learn about where you're going and they're usually walking tours as well so you learn about sort of the area that you're in the history you know and how these sorts of foods came about and you know the history behind it and you get to try local food that you probably wouldn't really know of if you just walked into a restaurant because you'd never heard of it before so I definitely definitely recommend doing a food tour or two or three I think we did three now when you're traveling getting around can be quite stressful especially if there's a language barrier and what we discovered was this app called City Mapper. Our London host actually told us about it and it was seriously the best thing ever. It's not available in every city but it was available in most cities that we were in in Europe and basically you put in your destination and it tells you the different methods of getting there. So it will tell you how you can get there by bus or train or whatever other methods that are available. It'll even tell you how much it would cost if you were to catch a cab or an Uber. So it really covers all the methods or oh, as well as how long it would take to walk there. So I definitely recommend that app and it's free. Now also if you're traveling with a friend or partner, I definitely recommend that you delegate directions to one person. And the reason for that is because if everyone's trying to work out how to get to a certain place and you know everyone might have a bit of a different idea then that's when arguments can start taking place so it's just so much easier to just say okay you look after that and if we get lost it doesn't matter but you know you can be the one person that we all follow it's just easier that way now obviously if you're using an app like city mapper or google maps which is really useful then you need mobile data connection and i actually really recommend this because we've been on holidays before where we haven't had connection and we'll get lost or we won't be able to look things up and it makes so much of a difference when you do have access to internet and you can just refer to Google Maps or whatever to figure out where you are and where you need to go as well as just being able to look up things like you might be able to look up a certain restaurant um, and look up TripAdvisor on the spot it's really helpful to have data connection and there are so many different companies that offer global sim cards and stuff it's definitely something you can do or prepare for before you go away you don't need to go there and get it there which might be a bit more stressful if you don't know where you're going if there's a language barrier I will put the details of the one that we used in the description box down below so my next tip is that you need to pack wisely now I did a whole video on what I packed with me to Europe so if you haven't seen that yet you can watch that I will link it in the description box below but basically in a nutshell you need to pack wisely you need to pack stuff that's versatile and that can wash easily and also with the bag that you bring with you especially if you're going to places where there might be theft or you might be scared of pickpocketers then definitely choose a bag that's not too easy to just you know unzip and grab your stuff 
So for me, I chose a side bag, and with a side bag, you can always have it in front of you. I would recommend that you never sort of have it behind you. Um, and also, if you have little zips inside the bag, that's even better because then you can put your money in there, and then obviously, it's so much more difficult to pickpocket your bag because you know your stuff is actually within pockets inside your bag. So definitely think about things like that. Now in terms of gypsies and pickpocketers and things like that in Europe, we've all heard the stories and we've all been freaked out by it, but we found that basically if you are smart and switched on, then you are not going to be a target for these people. And what I mean is, you know, don't have your bag behind you if you're on the train. Obviously, that makes you an easy target. Someone can just come up behind you, unzip your bag and take your stuff. Also, we found that there are people that go up to you and especially in Paris, they will go up to you and ask you if you speak English. And that's sort of like their opening to distract you and, you know, basically one person might distract you while the other person takes your thing. So if anyone goes up to you, just don't let them get your attention. So just, you know, straight away, just say no, or, you know, not interested and walk away. Don't stop and give them your attention because once you do that, then you're pretty much doomed. There were also lots of girls with clipboards pretending to sort of get signatures for a petition. Uh, definitely stay away from those people too. But I would say just as a general rule of thumb, within Europe or within places where it's really known for pickpocketers, if anyone's going up to you, just walk away, say no, don't even give them your attention and you'll be okay. So following on from this, I would definitely recommend that you not carry too much cash on you for obvious reasons, because if you do get pickpocketed, then a lot of cash is going to be lost and no one's going to be happy about that. So what we did was that we did carry cash with us, but we also carried a credit card called 28 Degrees. And basically it's a credit card that you can use that doesn't charge any transaction or international fees. So it's definitely worth having this if you're traveling and it doesn't cost anything to sign up for it. So I will put the link in the description box below. If you do have to carry a wad of cash with you and you know that you're not going to spend it all in that one day, then I would recommend considering getting a money belt or one of those bags that you wear inside because you know that that's theft proof. No one knows that you've got that on you and it's definitely just you know good for peace of mind so that's all my general travel tips now on to my airbnb tips and i've also got a blog post about this in the description box below as well as the links to all the airbnb places we stayed at now the first thing is that you want to stay in a good location now this doesn't always mean that you're staying where all the tourists are at now when you're doing your research, I definitely recommend that you look on TripAdvisor because that's where all the other travelers have their opinions and reviews on where they think is a good place to stay in that certain city. And in some cities, we found that we weren't necessarily staying where all the tourists are at and it was actually a really good thing. So to give you an example, in Venice, we didn't actually stay in the main area where St. Michael's Square is, which is mainly where all the tourists stay. We actually stayed on a different island called Giudecca, which was just opposite Via Vaporetto. And I really enjoyed staying on that island to get a really good uh, local feel. You're away from the tourists and yeah, I just really enjoyed that experience. So if that interests you as well, then I would definitely do your research on where is a good place to stay within that city. Once you've done that, then you can do your research on Airbnb. Now, I personally wouldn't stay in an Airbnb place that has less than 10 reviews because I want to be able to, first of all, read the reviews to see if other people have had a good experience. And also I want to stay in a place where the host has had, you know, a decent amount of experience hosting people at the Airbnb place. Now, speaking of reviews, I actually read through a lot of the reviews for each place, if not all of the reviews, because I really wanted to get a good idea of what other people's experiences were like staying at that particular Airbnb. And that is really, really useful. You can also look at their ratings on certain categories, and you can also look at their communication response rate. So for a host that has a 100% or even like 95% response rate, and that's really good because you wanna know that you can rely on your host if you need to ask them any questions or things like that. 
Also on Airbnb, you can rent just a room within the apartment or the house or whatever, or you can search by entire place. Now, if you want to read more about my Airbnb tips, then definitely check out the blog post down below. Otherwise, that's all my travel tips. If you guys have any questions for me at all, definitely leave them in the comments down below and I will try to answer them best way that I can. Definitely thumbs up this video if you found it useful. You can follow me on my blog which is lovechicstyling.com and connect with me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!